Okay, so what I've been asked to do is to solve problem number 48 in um, your unit one handout, and at least in this version, it's on page 35. Um, if you're watching this video a couple of years from when this is recorded, it may not still be on 35, depending on what kind of revisions I made. But the particular question that's being asked is, in any mole, there are always 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Well, that's Avogadro's number. Okay, that's a defined number. Uh, particles can be anything, electrons, protons, atoms, molecules, formula units, just to name a few. Uh, if you have 12.63 moles of methane, how many molecules are there? Okay, uh, well, we can start either with the starting amount, because that is the starting amount, or we can start with the equality statement. And this statement right here, along with what it applies to, is where you're going to learn, where you're going to sort of do some interpretation and figure out what the equality statement ought to be. All right. So using that, then, in fact, I'll make the, put the paper kind of on top here to get a start. Kind of, kind of close, have them kind of close together. Um, let's see. We've got 6.02 or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and the problem states that. Uh, that, that can be anything, including molecules. And so it's asking for molecules of methane, right? But it says any kind of molecule, it's a, a mole of those molecules, when you interpret the question, are equal to that many molecules of that same species. Okay? So therefore, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methane do you mind if I use the symbolic representation of methane? Okay. I know you don't know this yet, but it's CH4. Okay. You could have written out the word methane and been perfectly okay. All right. That is going to be equal to what? One mole of methane. All right. So now you have an equality statement. You have, I, I, I want to say units, and in a sense we kind of treat molecules and, and moles like units, but technically moles are also a counting number, but it works like a, a measurement unit. So we'll, we'll call it a measurement unit even though technically it's a counting number, like a dozen is a counting number, okay? Alright, so then our starting amount in the problem is 12.63 moles of methane. Alright? And using the process you've been taught in here for setting up a con conversion then, once we've got a starting amount we just simply put that starting amount over 1. Okay, all we're doing is a conversion uh, always works the same way. If it's a true conversion in the sense of changing from one unit of measurement to another. Let me tell you what a conversion is. Here's a definition. Okay, conversions are uh, changing the way a, the amount, some substance is being measured without changing the amount. Is changing the way something is being measured without changing the amount. So we're changing the units of measurement without actually changing the amount. And I'll explain that in a minute a little further, okay? What I want to do, the practical application of that in this context is we want to look at the equality statement up here. And this type of thing here, right here, where I have one value equaling another value, okay, where there's some you know, units and species, things like that, that's an equality statement. So the name we're going to give that, you're going to hear me use this term a lot in this class, equality statement. Okay? So we have an equality statement here. And what we want to do is look at the two sides of the equality statement and find the side of the equality statement that matches the units and species that are remaining in the problem. Well, in this case, this is the only thing that's in the problem, so this is the remaining part. Does that make sense? Later in the semester, when we get to stoichiometry, you, that remaining part will make a little more sense. Okay? But right now, it's the starting amount. So we're going to take the side of the equality statement that matches the units and species as the remaining part, or in this case, the starting amount, and put that on the other side of this fraction. The other side meaning if this is the top, we're going to put it on the bottom here. Does that make sense to everybody? If I leave you behind in the dust, now you can raise your hand and let me know and ask a question. Okay? Make me stop and not leave you in the dust. Yes, sir. The mole and the molecule, why are those Okay. Molecules are a discrete particle, a discrete unit of something. Okay. It's like a marble is a discrete thing, right? Or a ball. Uh, or 
your hoodie is a discrete separate thing, right? That's a molecule. Moles are um, 6.02 times 20 to 23rd, all those things of whatever they are. It could be electrons or, ele or molecules or atoms or whatever, okay? So like a dozen is 12 or something, a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd or something. So mole is not the abbreviation for mole? No, no, and you got to be careful about that. And you notice I've, sp I've spelled it M-O-L here. That's the Latin or German spelling. Um, the way we spell it in the United States is M-O-L-E. But we kind of, most chemists shorthanded M-O-L, okay? So that's why I did it that way. So now what I want to do is to put that side of the equality statement that matches this unit and species here and put it in the bottom here. So we'll take one mole of methane and put it down here. Okay? Then I'm going to take the other side of the equality statement and put it on the top. Okay. Yes, ma'am. When you cancel things out, like how you always do, like you're not canceling any numbers out, you just cancel out the. Yeah, you generally only cancel units and species. Now that's not to say if two numbers aren't exactly even, you can't cancel those. But they're different numbers. Yeah, no, you wouldn't do that. That's okay. right. Okay. All right. Uh, so what she's talking about is, and this is more for Brian Carbon's benefits, since he's kind of new here. Okay. That if I have something like this, Brian, I have X times y over x, what's the answer? Y. Yeah, y, because the two x's cancel. But we can also cancel units of measurement and species in the same way. Okay? All right, and then now we just have to solve the answer. We take this number and multiply by that number, okay? But now before we do that, before we actually do the math, let me just draw your attention to something really quickly. If I haven't done it, if I've done this before, forgive me, but I think I, I don't think I've covered this class. Would everybody agree that 2 equals 2? Yes. Okay. So when I put 2 over 2 in a fraction, what's that equal to? 1. And if I have a dozen of something, what's that equal to? 12. And if I put a dozen then over 12, what's that equal to? Okay. Well, because two things are equal like this up here, if I put it in a fraction, what is that fraction equal to? 1. So what we're doing is we're multiplying the starting amount by 1. But we're doing it in a way, so multiplying it by 1 doesn't change the amount, right? But it does change how we're measuring it. That's what I was saying earlier about the definition, right? It is a conversion. Okay? But I'm having you do it this way because when we get into about unit 5 or 6 in here, we're going to be doing problems that you're going to have to turn sideways on the paper and fill up the whole row with these conversions. And you'll be able to do it. But what you want to do is get really good at this part of it right now so you know what's going on. Huh? Oh, yeah. Lots of practice. Okay. All right. So we're ready to do the math now. Let's see. So 12 point. Anybody got a calculator yet? So you might want to help practice with me. I don't use this calculator very much, so I'm trying to find my up carrot. Well, that's the up carrot there, I think. Let's find out. Okay, good. Well, just bear with me. I'll show you how to do that. Okay? So this, when they put it in, the, in this particular calculator, when it has this 24 sort of stuck up like an exponent, that doesn't mean an exponent of 24. It means times 10 to the 24th, okay? Times 10 to the 24th power, okay? So the actual answer then is 7.605786 times 10 to the 24th power, okay? So one of the reasons for having your own calculator in here is that you need to learn to speak your calculator's language, okay? Every, uh, every brand of calculator, sometimes different models of calculators, kind of speak a different language. And so when you're doing homework to practice, to be good, for, good on the calculator, to be ready for a test, if you're not practicing with your calculator, if you're using one of my calculators in class and not doing any homework, that's not going to work too good, right? 
I want you to do really, really well on the tests. Okay, so I'm doing everything I can that I can reasonably do to help you do well on tests, and you need your own calculator to do that. Fair enough? I don't hear anybody saying yes or no. That might be nervous. Ah, okay. So let's see. How many digits in this number? How many significant digits is this number? Four. How many? How about this one? Four. So we don't worry about the ones here because those are just counting numbers. Okay? We only worry about the measured numbers and the calculated numbers. Okay? Exponents are not even considered. That doesn't matter here. At least in this case it doesn't. Okay? So what we want is how many numbers in our final answer? Four. One, two, three, four. Well, one, two, three, four. So we're going to underline from here over. Okay. So then our, uh, now I haven't included my units and species yet in this answer. So let's do that. Molecules of methane. And then how do we show that we're rounding off? Well, we underline to show how, what we're going to round off. We use an error in to show that we ha that, that we're, this next thing we're going to write is the rounded off answer. We don't use an equal sign because these are not actually equal. So then we see 7, or write 7.606 times 10 to the 24th molecules okay, of CH4. And since that's the end of our problem, I'm going to put a, des a, a period there, and I'm going to put a box around the answer to show that uh, that's what you want Mr. Taylor to look for for your answer. Okay? Yep. Did you just multiply the um, 12.63 by the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd? So like how did you get the 7 point? I multiplied this number times this number times that number. Okay. Is that confusing? Yep. Not really, but it's a good thing to learn to do. If you're going to do anything in uh, a technical career in college, you're going to need to know how to write math theorems, and that's part of my writing math theorems. Just a, t just a tip. I do it to kind of set uh, an example for something that will help you later. But no, I won't count off for it. Okay? That's what I, but it would be good if you got in that habit. Yeah? Uh, I knew to round off the four digits in the final answer because both these numbers had four digits. Okay? And I, but um, let's say I had four digits in this, this number and four digits in this number. My final answer only had four digits. I don't have to do any rounding off, right? Okay, yeah. No, this is a, well, I see what you're saying. We, because we treat this like a measured number, hmm. see, it gets a little bit tricky, okay, because this is actually um, measured, even though that's a, moles are technically by definition a counting number. Um, don't sweat that too much. We treat it like a, a measurement unit, okay? Mm -hmm.